Hello, friends, and happy Stratterday. Cyberry here with another Darkest Dungeon How to Use Guide. Real quick, before I get rolling on this, uh, thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and share this guide with a friend. Alright, all that out of the way, let's get down to it. Today, we're going to take a look at how to play the Meister. The Meister was released August 14th of 2021, and last updated August 25th of 2021. The canon name of the Meister is Yi Young. Uh, the credits, real quick. Engineer Bean did the design, coding, and dialogue. Trehe, and I'm so sorry if I'm butchering that name, uh, did the art and animation. Uh, Shallow Iris did the coding, sound, and direction. And the workshop page has a a myriad of people they thank for assistance along the way uh, within the Discord community. Diving into the base stats real quick, um, the max HP is going to start at 18 at resolve level 1 and go to a 34 at resolve level 5. Uh, this is what I would consider to be low HP. It's very close to what the Jester has. Um, Starting wise, it's very close to the Antiquarian, but she doesn't progress in HP as quickly as the Meister does. Basically, the best comparison we have is the Jester, and he's off by like 1 HP. Um, a little frail, there are ways around that. Uh, not really a concern. Dodge is a 5, and it's going to progress by 5 at each level to a 25 at max resolve. Um, this is what I consider to be average dodge, uh, same as a bounty hunter or a man-at-arms would have. The prod is a zero, as you'd expect. The speed is a six at first resolve, a seven at third resolve, and an eight at fifth resolve. Um, I consider this to be good speed. Uh, this is going to be the same speed, ranks, and growth as an occultist has, so it's just, you know, like a half step slower than a plague doctor or... Um, a jester even, um, but consider will considerably and rather consistently outspeed things like a Hellion or a Vestal um, in case that is important to you. Accuracy mod is a zero. The crit is a 6% and it, this will go to a 10% at max level. Uh, this is top of the line crit. Uh, it's going to be the same as an Arbalist or a Grave Robber. So expect, depending on what move you choose, to get a lot of crits with the Meister. And finally, the damage is 5 to 10 at opening resolve. This will grow to a 9 to 16 at max resolve. Um, this is what I consider to be the mark of a good frontline damager. Um, this is the same growth as a highwayman. That's kind of the cutting point where I go from like an average frontline damage to good. So he's right on the cusp of what I would consider a good DPS unit. You will find, however, that a lot of his move options have a rather low percentage that they'll deal to one target, but they have other, either other abilities they do, or they hit multiple targets. So let's just go straight into the combat skills, uh, starting with Fury of the Beast. Fury of the Beast is usable from rank 2, 3, or 4, and can target any rank of enemy. This is a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 85, it does full damage and has a crit mod of plus 5%. This will do a bonus 50% damage against marked targets. Uh, this 50%, unlike um, like a bounty hunter or whatnot, other normal marked synergy units, this doesn't actually get better or worse as you level up. In exchange, you start out with a more potent version. A lot of times you find out if you're running mark comps that running a mark comp at level 1, uh, they're not as potent as follow-ups to the mark as they are at level 5. They're extremely potent at level 5. Uh, and you get a lot of KOs, one-shots, uh, crits, that kind of thing. Uh, but here it's a little more consistent. You're going to get 50% damage against marked regardless of level. Um, down here, this when not preheated. That's a standard mode stuff, and this does not change in his second mode. Annihilated. The second ability is Preheat. This is usable once per battle and can be used from rank 2, 3, or 4. 
and this will change his mode. Uh, the beginning mode he starts out is just the basic mode. It's called Gear First, or First Gear, I would assume. Basically a car reference, in my opinion, but uh, I don't know anything about it, so I could be wrong. Uh, but anyway, this will switch him to Preheated Mode, or Back, if you're already in it. And if you are switching into Preheated Mode, it will give him a buff for plus 10% damage and plus 3% crit that will last until the combat ends. Uh, this is basically used as a way to change up how some of these abilities interact based on that mode. It doesn't shift the accessible moves. You're still going to select your four. Third combat skill is open fire. It's usable from rank 2, 3, or 4, and will hit rank 2, 3, and 4 enemies at the same time. It's a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 90, a damage modifier of negative 50%, and a crit mod of plus 1% for each of those targets. Uh, when you are not preheated, this is going to come with a cooldown for two rounds. So you will not be able to select this for the next two rounds if you are not preheated when you select it. So that's kind of the payoff you see here. And if he's versatile enough that you can get around this uh, with other... Um, support moves and or other coverage uh, if you do not want to select preheated as one of your four options. A devastating blow. The fourth ability is spray gunpowder. This is usable from rank two or three and will hit every target on the enemy side. It's a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 85, a damage mod of negative 80% and a crit mod of negative 6% per target. Now, the target is going to be marked and debuffed, and both of those will last two rounds. The debuff itself is for a prot debuff of minus 10%. So for those uh, kind of chonkier enemies with a little bit of prot, a little bit of uh, resistance to your damage, you're going to slowly eat away at that with this move. Now, keep in mind, um, if you are not preheated, that you were also going to mark yourself for three turns and debuff yourself to receive 25% more damage for three turns. This only affects the Meister, um, but that is quite the penalty to be paying for not being preheated. Uh, this is a little more risky, but you can get around it with things like uh, guard units or uh, stealth could even help here. Um, and there's also another move on his list that we're going to get to later that will remove Mark. Uh, from your side of the combat. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. The fifth ability is Acupuncture. This is usable from any rank. This will heal a single target on your side for 3 to 4 HP. This will clear all debuffs. This comes with a chance to cause bleed on the person you're healing for one point a round for three rounds. I believe this factors in your uh, resistances, so that's a little lower than it looks. And if you use this consecutively, this last line comes in, chance to bleed target increases by 100% for the next round. Um, so basically, if you try and use this back to back on the same target, you are way more likely to inflict bleed. Matter of fact, that second one almost guaranteed will probably inflict bleed. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this move later when we get into the trinket section, assuming I don't forget. But there are uh, there is a trinket synergy to use with him to empower this even more. The sixth ability is Smoke Bomb. This is usable from rank 1 or 2, and will hit every enemy. It's a ranged attack that will move the Meister back one rank has an accuracy base of 90, a damage modifier of negative 80%, and a crit mod of negative 2% per target. This is going to debuff the targets, minus 5 accuracy and minus 5 dodge with 100% base. This is going to clear marks from everybody on your side of the combat, and give yourself a buff where you cannot be marked in the future. There is no changes when not in preheated to this move. So this is a good way to, if, you, if you've if you got mark problems and your, your party is being marked, or if you want to just wipe out the mark you gave yourself with spray gunpowder, 
this is not a bad way to do that. Keep in mind this will shuffle him backward a rank, changing what moves he has access to unless you can reset him in other ways. And the seventh ability is Iron Fist. This is usable from rank 1 or 2, and can target rank 1 or 2 enemies. It's a melee attack, which he has very few of, an accuracy base of 90, a damage modifier of negative 50%, and a crit mod of plus 5%. If the person you are targeting is not stunned, this will have a chance to stun with 110% base. At max level, the stun is 150% base, uh, so pretty potent. And if they are stunned, this will remove that stun from the target and give you a damage modifier buff of 250% and will ignore prot when doing damage. Um, so this is very similar to uh, like the visceral attack you see in the, the hunter mods, uh, but it's very, if it's worth it to you to consume the stun you put on that guy, you can basically nuke him with damage here. Because rather than doing a 50% uh, of your damage potency on one target, you're doing, uh, assuming I'm doing the mental math right now correctly, you're doing 300% or three times your damage potency to that one target just because you're hitting the guy who was stunned a second ago. But this will consume the stun, so make sure it is worth it. This does not alter itself based on whether you're preheated or in gear first mode. Monstrous size has no intrinsic merit. So now let's look at the camping skills real quick. Uh, he has the generic encourage, wound care, and pep talk that you would expect from a modded class. Uh, the first unique camping skill he's got is alarming drums. Alarming drums is time cost three. This will prevent nighttime ambush and reduce the chance of party surprise by 20% for the next four battles. Uh, this is actually a really good um, prevent nighttime ambush skill um, and it's very good also um, if you do not want to get surprised maybe you don't have the best scouting on your team in the world or maybe you're running a, uh, a dark run uh, but either way this is a very good defensive uh, prevent nighttime ambush skill and it only costs three so it's actually kind of a steal if you're using this I, I probably never leave my hamlet without it the second unique camping skill is Soldering, which is time cost 2. You were going to select a companion, and you yourself the Meister, and that companion will receive 10% damage and 3% crit for the next 4 battles. Um, this is good for basically anybody you want offensive potency to be empowered with. Uh, if you've got a repost unit, this is a very good way to do that. Um, if you're running a leper, this is a very good way to do that. The only thing you really have to worry about that at that point is accuracy. But there are no debuffs associated with this skill, uh, being that it's only time cost 2. If you've got no stress recovery to do, this is a good way to uh, stack the cards in your favor. The third unique camping skill is Eastern Medicine. This is time cost 2. You're going to select a companion. Heal them 10% of their HP, and they are going to receive a buff for plus 35% healing received for the next four battles. Um, especially if you are the healer in your party as the Meister, um, and you're using acupuncture, you, you're you going to gain a lot from this plus 35% healing received buff. Um, or, hell, if you just got one guy who marks himself or maybe is a target because of how your party is composed. If you've got one guy that has hit far more than the rest, this is a good way to uh, kind of even that out a bit, make it a little more manageable for you. Um, depending on your party comp, one of these two is going to be really, really good for you uh, as far as equipping. And you can always change it out on the fly. And the final camping skill is Stargazing. It's a time cost 3 camping skill. Uh, your party is going to have a chance at receiving uh, some effects here. A 75% chance that each person in your party is going to heal 20 stress, and a 25% chance that each one of them will take 15 stress instead. 
So this is kind of a good uh, RNG camp skill. It could be very, very beneficial for you, or it could, you know, they could start looking at the stars and go, oh no, this is pretty ominous. Oh fuck. And stress out literally everyone in your party. Um, or any wide array of effects in between theoretically could happen as well. So this is kind of a interesting one. I, I find sometimes it's worth the chance just to click on it and see what happens. Um, but time cost 3 makes that a little less often than I normally would if it were a time cost 2 or even 1 skill. Uh, beyond that, let's see. Crit effect for the Meister. Once you get a crit with him, you are going to buff yourself for the next two rounds for plus 20% damage and plus 5 accuracy. Um, so he's actually just going to be more uh, potent at hitting his target. He's a well-oiled machine. Okay, no more of that. Other than that, uh, let's see what else is unique about him. Uh, just the modes, gear first and preheat. Uh, they're not a typical modal fighter. You don't change any access with preheat. It is just going to buy you extra, like get you around the negative ramifications of open fire and spray gunpowder. Uh, another thing to mention on him, he has Custom Virtue and Afflictions. Uh, he's going to have Vengeful, which is his Virtue, and Resentful, which is his Affliction. Um, I don't offhand know what they do. I've done a lot of other prep today, so my apologies. I don't currently know exactly what each of them entails, but the fact that he will have a 3 to 1 ratio of being Resentful, the Affliction, uh, compared to Vengeful, uh, that is pretty standard. So as far as synergy notes on him, just the shorthand, uh, he's got a lot of mark synergy, uh, stun options, AoE cleave options, um, and depending on how you are equipping this class uh, with his custom trinkets and whatnot, he can be an actual good heal unit or an actual good tank, and we'll go over those a little bit later. Uh, quirks. What quirks would I go after for the Meister? I would prioritize, um, I think, his his good points as far as a base stat build. So his crit uh, is going to be pretty important. Um, speed and dodge could actually be very good for him as well. Uh, I would prioritize those above everything else. If you are pretty sure you know what skills you're almost always going to use, like, for example, if you're never going to use Iron Fist, and that means everything else you use attack-wise is ranged, you can prioritize ranged damage or ranged crits in that fashion. Uh, but if you're pretty sure you always want to run with Iron Fist, that changes things drastically. Uh, because now you are a mixed attacker. So uh, look out for quirks like Luminous, um, Deadly if you're going to be a mixed attacker, or uh, Eagle Eye if you are not using Iron Fist. Um, things like On Guard or Quick Reflexes could be useful depending on your party. Uh, so maybe lock those in those situations. Uh, but I find that the speed stat can be more readily changed through things like Trinkets. You don't necessarily need Quirks to handle that for you. But let's take a look at his Trinkets now while we have a moment. Uh, the first we're going to look over is the Color Stained Machinery. This is the Crystalline Trinket. It's going to give 40% Prot, plus 30% Stun and Bleed Resistance to the Meister. So he's going to be pretty considerably tanky uh, for his lower HP stat. At the cost of, you are going to do 50% less damage. You will not be able to debuff enemies. And Spray Gunpowder cannot mark enemies as it normally would. Um, so it becomes less useful, but it will still mark yourself. Keep that in mind. If you are not um, in preheat mode, it will mark yourself still. Uh, and it, But it's going to come with this extra kicker at the bottom, resent, Resentment Beyond Time. On action, permanent repost, accuracy 100, damage base 9, minus 30%. 
and on repost hit, you will mark the target for two rounds. So, unconventionally, he can still serve as a unit marker, because any time you select a skill, he will activate his own permanent repost. Uh, I find this is useful enough, even at that minus 50% damage overall, that he'll be doing, especially if you're going to put his second trinket on and it's like um, somehow adding to his damage, getting a little bit of that back. Uh, maybe a Berserk Charm, uh, maybe a Legendary Bracer, whatever it might be. Uh, but I find this is an interesting way to make him into a tank repost unit. So if you've got a guy on your squad who's going to force guard, and you want a guy who can resist damage, will almost always have repost, uh, you might choose the Meister. His speed is high enough that he will go pretty early in the round, he will have that prod by default, and he will activate the repost as soon as the turn comes up. Um, so he's a very good repost unit if you're going to use this uh, trinket. Uh, the next one we got here is the rare high explosives. This is going to add 5 to his accuracy and plus 5% crit at the cost of you're going to receive 5% more crits yourself. Uh, open fire is going to change while you have this equipped to deal armor piercing damage and 20% more damage. So open fire is actually pretty good. That was the one that hits uh, the back three ranks um, and does 50% damage. So it's actually going to make it pretty damn potent just to shred those last three units. Uh, the next one we're going to go over here is the Strange Blueprint. This is the uncommon trinket. It's going to change spray gunpowder to do 150% of its normal damage, but cannot mark enemies anymore. It's going to change smoke bomb to do 150% of its normal damage, but cannot buff yourself anymore, so it will not... Uh, make it impossible to mark you anymore. Um, and this is going to give you a generic plus 10 accuracy with ranged skills. So if you're not using Iron Fist, this will be everything will receive a 10 accuracy. Uh, but you will no longer be able to debuff enemies, and this comes at the cost of 10% stress. This is an interesting changeup. Um, it's got some situational applications, but I haven't put together a uh, group myself where this is optimal but it does have some, its own like aoe options for smoke bomb and spray gunpowder um, it could be really good for a cleave team i just haven't put together one that would benefit most from this and the last two trinkets that i have my apologies that i'm missing several um is nut and bolt i'm going to start with bolt here it's going to add two speed to the meister at the cost of 10% stress. And Nut is going to add 8 dodge at the cost of 10% of your max HP. But if you have them both equipped, instead of removing 10% max HP or adding 10% more stress, it is going to reverse those into buffs uh, going the other way. Because you'll... yeah, that, that math checks out. So instead, you're going to be basically reversing those debuffs into buffs by equipping both um, and that's actually pretty functionally good for some early accessible trinkets. Like, if you're in an early game Hamlet and you luck into seeing this as a reward, uh, go for it. Because if you can get both, it's not a bad way to equip him in the early levels. Otherwise, it's just kind of fun, is what it is. Uh, other trinkets to mention, my apologies that I don't um, have... Uh, the one in mind is the Sunward Trinket for the Meister is going to uh, empower his healing move, Acupuncture, by 20% for the healing it does, but it will also cause it to cure Blight and Bleed as well. So you'll be able to have a pretty potent single target heal move that can clear debuffs Blight and Bleed and will only come with this minus of potential bleed causing. Um, after that. So it's pretty potent for a single target heal. I don't think, depending on your party, you can count on the Meister in that one case to always have your party's back as far as healing is concerned. But if you have another source to back him up um, in times of dire need, maybe you've got an Arbalist um, that might suit your needs. 
Uh, but basically, based on what you need that turn, if there's also Blight or Bleed or Debuff, uh, you can basically swap out the Meister's healing turn or the Arbalist's healing turn and get some rather potent um, effects out of it. So, um, let's see. We don't have any custom trinkets on the one we're going to send out on the quest here in a second. Let's go on something I think they'll survive. I think that Legion video scarred me for life. <laughs> we'll go here. Why not? Got yeah, three minutes. Let's, I could do that. All right. I think we're gonna go into the wield. Where blight and bleed are kind of equals. And the point of this group should be rather self-explanatory. Uh, but basically, we're gonna use the succubus and the meister to lock down enemies while giving her time to buff. Our land is remote and unneighbored. Every lost Got resource scout. must be recovered. All right, so we're looking for enemies. Uh, I'm gonna have to go down this dead end later, uh, just to finish the quest. But let's just look for fights. That's what we're here for. Whoa, your shit's all fucked up, yo. I think they're changing the layout of your things. Anyway, Druid and Sagittal. But basically, um, this isn't your typical mark comp, but it's going to be pretty suitable for what I need. All right, little puppy around my neck. Let's see what we can do here. Spray gunpowder is how I want to start off. Now I have this team lightly speed fixed so that he will go first on round one. So the succubus can follow up. Uh, with her rather potent stuff after. This guy will not be stunned, so we need him dead. Ooh, leave him I'm gonna, I need to stay on top of this healing, by the way. Let's get rid of you. Destroy. And the succubus should get her turn now. And she is going to use demonic leeching and get the stealing damage from them, but also get the buff stun against marked targets should work pretty well. That's your speed debuffs. Trinkets. Minus three in human mode. Not terrible. Alright, well we're gonna iron fist. No, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna hit a mark target. The ground quakes. Decimated. Need them dead first though. I'm actually gonna hit it again, get more strength out of it. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. Well, I'm glad the stealth option on my trinkets is keeping him pretty safe. I should do it by him bleed, right? No, it's not actually. Uh, we're gonna do that then. It didn't even... okay. Wow. Like, wow. I need to heal him, so that's unfortunate. They're gonna buy me another turn. Yeah, you did it, you did it. By resisting As it. The fiend falls, Iron fist him in the face. Blossoms. Not bad, not bad. I can turn this next thing into a fight, um, and I kind of want an invite anyway, so we're gonna do that. I gotta kill this sucker though. Alright, spray gunpowder again is our, is our good setup in this scenario. Ooh. Don't do it. Leave her alone, man. Alright, so we are going to hit you. 
You'd be stunned, right? Eh, you're okay. You're not the most stunnable thing in the world. We want you dead, though. Don't pull it forward! Oh shit. It changes everything. Um, I guess you're transforming. Oh, I see. They changed it. The next 98 rounds, the next 10 rounds. That's so cool. Okay, they sped up how the succubus works. Interesting. Well, I'm gonna do this. Damn it! I needed that invite. I'm too busy fucking around to do my job, though. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. He's dead too. All right, let's actually stun you. As the light and then we'll prioritize damaging this guy. Are lifted. That purpose is made clear. Oh really? That's nice. Well, we're gonna hit you with the side swing then. I knew I should have brought Laudanum. I didn't think this would be a problem, but I knew I should have brought Laudanum. Compassion is a rarity in the fevered pitch of battle. As okay. victories mount, okay. so too will resistance. S stealthed. Uh, so what haven't I used? Um, I believe I've used all of his moves that I have currently equipped. So let's keep spray gunpowder for first turn. Um, and let's uh, I could I could hmm. I don't think I'm gonna get to get around to using preheat just because I don't want to turn one preheat. I want to mark on turn one. So uh, instead, going to go back to like that or something. Unfortunately, uh, but preheat will still have its moves shown off. Shouldn't be a big deal. I'm gonna have to go further than I like, but Nature it is what it is. A victim to the spreading corruption. Oh no! Malformed with missing. Oh, you got really lucky, succubus. Be careful. Let's see if I can get a scout. The way is lit. The path is clear. Nope. We require only the strength to follow it. Alright, final combat. What do we got? Alright. Two people, two targets is not a bad deal. Let's get him with the mark again. We did not get the debuff from Proc. Not that that's a problem. Okay, he's only got some of his moves usable from this rank now. So some stuff might be inaccessible. Unfortunately, we are going to just hit a marked target. Um, we are going to use demonic leeching because I want to. Plus 30 for the next nine rounds. That's so dope. All right. Well. All right. I'm going to use acupuncture on myself. Impressive. Nice teleporting. Get him, girl. Get him, get him, girl. That's 10 bleed. That ain't bad. It's not gonna kill him, but it ain't bad. Uh, we're gonna do this then. Fury of the Beast. That should help. And now they both should die on their turns. Not a big deal. No stun. That's fine. The slow death. Unforeseen. 
Goodbye. Bye, lady. Wow, they changed the succubus considerably. Um, Success. So gonna have to mess around with her and figure out what the new way to use her is. Is it merely a trick Pretty of cool. the light? Overall, you should try the Meister today. Um, he's a lot of fun. He's got a lot of weird versatility with Mark comps, and uh, you can use him as a healer, use him as a tank. But primarily, I think he's best as a Mark setter. Anyway, thanks for watching. We've got another Let's Play video coming up on Wednesday and another guide next Saturday. So stay tuned. And if you're still watching this, maybe you should subscribe. Uh, we're still on our kick to get more subscribers, and you can be a huge part of that movement. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Stay frosty.